This is Business Analytics Using Forecasting. I'm Galit Shmueli. In this video, we're going to talk about two topics related to smoothing. One is prediction intervals, and the other has to do with automation. We talked about prediction intervals early on when we talked about performance metrics. Exponential smoothing methods belong to a larger set of models called state space models. This is good news because it means that we have closed mathematical formulas for prediction intervals. We want to use those when we're presenting forecasts to stakeholders. We don't only want to provide predictions or point predictions, but also we want to convey the uncertainty about those predictions. And that's why it's very useful to share prediction intervals. Remember that even when you do have formulas, sometimes your series violate all kinds of assumptions. So if you do have sufficient errors from your validation period, it is useful to look at charts of the prediction errors and be able to maybe construct empirical prediction intervals. Here's an example of prediction intervals for exponential smoothing from three different software packages. Excel Miner provides the upper and lower bound of a prediction interval in the form of a table. In R, the ETS function automatically generates 80% and 95% intervals, and you can easily plot them. Tableau's forecast option in the Analytics tab actually uses exponential smoothing. It produces point forecasts, and you can ask for prediction intervals. Let's look at automation when we're using exponential smoothing. Since the user has many choices to make in exponential smoothing, which method to choose, what smoothing constants to use, and so forth, it's often very tempting to use automated procedures. This is especially the case when we must forecast a large number of series. Forecasting many series is common in today's big data environment. Some software, like R, allow automated model selection. In R, you can simply leave out the part model equals in the ETS function. The point to remember is that the algorithmic implementation of whoever wrote the algorithm drastically affects the result. You can get very different models from different software implementations of automated exponential smoothing. In some cases, you might even be able to find a better model manually if you have a good idea of the type of trend and seasonality in your data. This concludes our videos on smoothing methods. You can also learn more about automation, time series and big data, and software in the interview with Professor Rob Heinemann. Lastly, I encourage you to try and experiment and run different types of exponential smoothing methods so that you get a feel of how they work and when they work. You can also see more examples in the textbook Practical Time Series Forecasting.